Captain's Log, Starlight 192.168.1.29. Me and my ever present science officer Zed Tech. Hello, how are you doing, my friend? Good, Captain. How about you? I'm doing very well, and I'm looking at this beautiful uh, metropolis we have been building here. It is astounding how much we have been spreading our influence around. Uh, moving trains, logistics, and just all sorts of amazing things around. I have noticed over on the right side here, there's a a, a spur of roboports that I, I didn't notice last time we were here. Is this is this something to do with you, Mr. Science Officer? Uh, the, the, the line of roboports going up to our copper and iron production? Yeah, this, this looks like something that maybe has your handiwork written all over it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> It, it, it's maybe it's growing on its own. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> we, we can hope that the robots have actually formed a little bit of sentience and the like, as any uh, p resource producing species is want to do. They're trying to expand to uh, get more resources. Must be the explanation here. <laughs> must, must be. Do you know the reason why I'm doing that? Uh, the reason, I mean, I would be doing it to protect the areas, but I should suspect that you're actually doing it because you're super lazy and don't want to build. Exactly. <laughs> Can you just go to the map and zoom in on the iron production area? The iron. Pro I am zoomed in on the iron production area. Do you see that one single uh, electric mining drill that has an X over it? Oh yes, yes, yes. That's what they want robots to disassemble. <laughs> oh, really? Well, okay, wonderful. <laughs> so, what I kind of want to do is use the robots to. Um, Build a wall. Yes, we're gonna build a wall. Uh, we're gonna build a Again? wall from from the uh, the lake to the right of the iron, which I believe we actually named Lake Erie. I've, I've been uh, reviewing some some uh, some past reports, and I'm, I'm fairly sure we named that one Lake Erie. Uh, and I would like to build up from the very east side, right hand side, of Lake Erie, up to that other um, lake up there to kind of stop the spread of this megaropolis that the biters are building off to the side here. I, I feel like they're going to be encroaching on our territory and we worked hard for it, this territory. It's ours. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> we have we have the deed to it, I guess. We do, yes. Yeah. So I have freshly written down on this people the piece of paper we made. <laughs> <laughs> and the entire system called behind it that Legal system and yeah, the legal, si the legal system required. that we obviously but uh, we find self-evident on this planet. You know, uh, I was just coming down to have a look at the iron here. I've noticed that when the train goes and comes, we uh, we, we end up with a little bit of an empty spot. But uh, there's not much we can do with that unless we're going to like redesign this input system. Here. I, I mean, I'm also sure that they got notified about the future expansion towards their city and. Uh, it Move out notice. Oh, I definitely, I definitely took out an advert in the local newspaper, which again we have started printing uh, to uh, distribute round to them to make sure that they know. I mean, who doesn't read the newspaper? So uh, I did uh, add a new train for iron because our entire smeltery and consumption system is just too fast. Too fast <laughs> for, for the train trains. systems that we've got. Yeah, I, I have noticed this. That uh, as I say, the train turns up and then it empties out very quickly. And then we have yeah. empty, empty iron for a little while whilst the next train slots into place. Uh, which is not exactly the best. No, not not exactly the best. No, no, no. Uh, I'm just having a quick um, look here. Purple is electric engines and electric furnaces. Hmm. I have a whole setup for electric engines, right? Yeah. What do we need for electric electric furnace. Uh, oh, it's the stone I brick. It's the stone brick. You reckon we're making them? Yeah, we are. <laughs> are we making a good number of them? Uh, I believe it's over by the stone area here. No, we've got one machine turning over, which is not the worst. I mean, it appears to have a provider chest with two hundred in it. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I think we're good on electric furnaces. <laughs> Why? It's because they're used in the purple science. Uh, well, uh, are they? Really? Yes, they are, really. I'm surprised. I'm going to set up a filter on this. And there's still the electric oh. engines from the robot production, which I'm sure will make all robot rights activists very sad, <laughs> but uh, I, I need them. <laughs> I'm sure at some point I'll go ahead and make a, a better... Oh it's, outside, oh, it's outside the network. 
Ah, oh, I was gonna gonna have a whole spiel what? about how I was gonna make like a, a machine that, that builds the furnaces at some point, but right now I'm just gonna put in a haxy system with requester chests. Just, just do this, Captain. I mean, it's quite simple. I, I was essentially doing exactly the same, just here. Science done. Science done. done. Closer to rocketry. <laughs> oh, they must have been getting these out of other chests. Oh, so I've just requested a bunch of furnaces for the purple science because here come the robots. I was like, where are they? And they must have been bringing them from, from somewhere more further afield than the actual uh, furnace yeah. production area. Uh, I wonder... I wonder how many we've got hidden in the in the in the logistics system somewhere. I bet I bet there's hundreds, hundreds of furnaces. Okay, so I made a requester chest that asks for the furnaces. It puts it on. Oh, oh my. wow, that was a serious one. Uh, I put it onto a oh, belt. Oh, they, they are. Oh yeah. Okay. Have you have you got well, this? Is it, is this done? <laughs> the, the, no, we are still a far away from actually getting the network covered. Okay, we might have to move on up there. Do I have a passive provider chest? Then I can just put this down. We'll have purple science done to a certain certain degree. Taking a while for the train to OMT. <laughs> a little bit longer than I expected. Oh. <laughs> It, it's actually a really fast. Uh, it is actually really fast, but just just slightly less fast than I was kind of expecting. <laughs> about, about half as fast as I was expecting. And away. 150, 20. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> I'm off on my captain's journey. <laughs> captain's journey. Are you on a correct train, though? I'm on an yes, iron train. Where else could it be going? Let's, let's have a look. Oh, there are two iron bases. No, it's Cisco. Yeah, no, we're going to Cisco. It's good. Good. Oh, I should probably have taught, brought the tank. In fact, I'm going to get out and get in the tank. I do like the tank when it gets up to full speed. I feel like nothing can stop me. Uh, except for trees. No, they, they they slow me down a little bit. But uh, all right, I'm just about to enter the first tiny village. This should be nice and easy. Well, it's just a little bit of an outlier. I'm not expecting any great difficulty here. <laughs> Are we ready for a quick and painless death? Painless. Wow, maybe. gonna painful. be painless. <laughs> oh, I forgot that the uh, cannon shells were so slow at firing at the first first few levels. Okay, how far does that pollution spread? Do I have to worry about these? No, I don't. I do, however, I have to worry about all this. Hmm. Green circuits are not being produced at the speed that I prefer them to be produced at. Yeah, I mean, green circuits seem to almost need their own, like, little personal factory, like, start a base sized factory. But that sounds like a lot of work. Exactly. So, as, as, as you're aware, I am a, uh, a, a galactic wide colonization master. I have gone round and done uh, many, many tours of duties, colonizing many different star systems. And during all this time, we found many examples of unintelligent life. I'm, I'm not sure if we can classify the biters as unintelligent, but they don't seem to be technologically advanced, and that's where I'm going to put the line down for intelligence. Uh, intelligence, we have to remember, is a word that we made up, so we're allowed to set the bar wherever we like for intelligence. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, it's one of the things that really annoys me when you're like, oh, supposedly there's intelligence on this planet. It's like, well, we made the word up. We get to say what intelligence means, and we think what we do is intelligent. Um, well, okay. But yeah, so and we've not found any of this. Now, a lot of people uh, put forth the uh, the postulation, postulation that uh, maybe that there are actually a lot of intelligence critters out there. They just choose to hide themselves. And I'm, I'm staggered, staggered that people would think that is possible. I mean, whilst space is big, I believe there is a, a famous treatise by a, a, an ancient author going on uh, about how big space actually is, mind-bogglingly mind so, I believe. We can see stars and galaxies hundreds if not millions of light years away. Uh, we can detect... Oh, I'm out of fuel right in the middle of a biter pack. This is, <laughs> this is not the best thing I've ever done. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. 
<laughs> okay, I mean that that's fun. <laughs> Not quite what I was going for. Quick, get out and chop a tree down. Oh wait, do I have anything? I have coal on me, get back inside. <laughs> I just turned my night vision off and I don't know how. So yeah, I was wondering, how would you go about hiding an entire civilization? Uh, hiding an entire civilization? Yeah. Is it, uh, so, uh, say here's that, the first question. Yep. Uh, is it interstellar? No, let's say that you have decided that your uh, civilization has decided that a single... A single solar system's worth of space is enough. Oh, I've done it silly again. Come on, come out. Ah, is enough space because you can fit an awful lot of space. Can you please get out of there? You can fit an awful lot of uh, artificial habitats around us. Yeah, you okay? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just needed to back out properly. <laughs> Uh, and like you can fit many trillions of more people, many trillions of times more people onto uh, an artificial habitat than you can on a planet. So there is the strong possibility that they're only around a single single star. So you're asking the question, how would you hide that? Yeah, how would you hide a type two civilization? Someone who has taken over all the energy production of their star. Because of course, even though you might have the the, the wondrous ability to uh, plow through bad guys, as I'd be doing, uh, you might have the wondrous ability to uh, contain all this energy. But due to the laws of thermodynamics, whatever you do, you're going to have some waste heat coming through. First step I would take is uh, to fake a supernova. Fake a supernova, just just to begin the process of hiding the fact that your civilization may have been yes. there. So there may have been an alien civilization that detected your presence long time ago. Um, no, 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 it's, uh, that, uh, that there is uh, just the fact that you're gonna make a Dyson swarm around a star, dimming it yep. more. Uh, if you fake a supernova, oh, it's just it's no longer the star is no longer there. Oh, could you hide it as a what? Like, make it appear like a white dwarf from the outside? That is a, that's a question. There. Mm. Sorry, my own private musings there. Um. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Is that you need to change the signature of the star somehow? Yes. Yeah. I I am in agreement there. And it's not just the star, though. The star is obviously the biggest thing you've got to hide. But like your your electromagnetic. Um, radiation, radiation. No, directional, directional emitters, or lasers especially, it could be done. This is all with the notion of this civilization from the beginning wanting to be hidden. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you would imagine that it's a movement that comes on after realizing how fast the universe is and um, coming up with some sort of rudimentary game theory. Because um, this thing, like, Civilizations might have the best intentions at heart, but fear is a powerful motivator, and if they think you are going to come for them, which, let's be honest, you can never be 100% sure that they're not going to be coming for you, their logical course of events is to take you out beforehand. Even though they, they could be really nice, revere life, be like, this is, this is something you know we do with great reluctance because we're worried that you, uh, let's they, say, a, a human race somewhere, has been like, well, I, we're we're worried about this this race of biters here, for instance, coming after us because you know there there might be some sort of evidence that they're aggressive towards us. I, I'm not sure what that evidence would be, um, but but you just get some ideas when some 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 guys don't like you that much. Um, the problem is that we only have the point of view of a human. Yes. And uh, just having that is not enough to come to a concrete conclusion in the behavior of an alien species. No, but uh, you don't always have to... So, is the need for energy based in behavior or just based on the fact that you are an entropic being or an entropic process in the universe? Well, I think it's based on behavior because it will determine how aggressively you go towards getting the energy. I have I, a feeling I, by the time that we start winding down this star phase that we find ourselves in, most civilizations are going to have to either get aggressive or get wiped out. I don't know. I don't know. Or reach some sort of 
intergalactic accord where everybody agrees that we can just share the stuff that we've got. I'm not sure how that will go down. Well, this is again going with the notion that no, you're not the only one in the universe. Well, I mean, we've found uh, not intelligent life, base life. I don't know what. How do we want to organic, not intelligent life? We've we've discovered this several times. Um, I'm I'm currently uh, sending out greeting packages. Yeah, but you can't to... really <laughs> greeting packages. <laughs> uh, but then again, you can't really sign an accord with them, can you? No, no, I suppose not. I suppose not. Not if they're trying to hide, anyway. <laughs> they're hiding really badly if we're seeing them on radar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these guys are hiding quite badly. Some might say they're not actually hiding at all. <laughs> that's a lot. Of, that, that's a high explosive shell. <laughs> yeah, I, I oh, like these high that's explosive. a big... Yeah, these, that's a these need being taken care of. No problem. We'll just kind of cruise around the outside. I shouldn't have gone into the forest. That's a bad idea. Just slows me down a little. I you can put a flamethrower on it. Uh, it does. I just don't have the fuel. You can make it. I think. You should be able to. Effective. I just haven't done so. Um, against these crowds, yes. Take these guys out. Do a repair. Feel good about myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dead yet, this is good. This is good. That is, that is good. Let's have another quick check of the map. Yeah, so this this one I'm wiping out now is more a bit uh, precautionary. And I suppose this kind of sums up why people, uh, why civilizations would try to hide, is these precautionary measures, right? You don't, you don't want to be the victim of someone else's precautions. <laughs> um... Well, yeah, but th then again, it's when when will you approach another civilization? Will you forever hide behind, I don't know, your planetary shields? I have a feeling that there would be a lot that do. I mean, obviously, so this is a, a terrible answer to the Fermi paradox because it requires every every alien ever to also want to hide. I'm not saying every alien civilization. I'm saying every single alien must also want to hide for this to also be true. Um, or, or the UFO stories are true. Okay, okay, I have a question. What would you do? What would I do? I would actually open up because I feel like, despite the risks, the um, the 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 payoff of intergalactic cooperation is by far greater than. I know. I mean, uh, greater than the risk of your entire species getting wiped out. I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I want to say, but I feel like if you don't risk anything, then as a species, you're doomed anyway. You, you'll just stagnate, and then things that are other species that are more fit for purpose um, will come along and take your niche off you. Is stagnation preferable to risk? No, no, I think I think the other way around. I, I, I definitely feel like risk is preferable to stagnation. Um, if you can be risk averse and still not stagnate, if you can do something to your own society that keeps everything stirred up, then uh, maybe that would work. But you you still end up over selecting for what your species does, right? Um, and that's probably not the best way of doing things. There's probably, thanks to the glories of the almost per like the perceptibly infinite universe, like. <laughs> As far as we can tell, there's no limit. Um, there's probably going to be another species who can do the thing that you're trying to do better. Iron Train seems to be safe now, maybe? 